hello and good morning from Mie Prefecture. Actually, I think it, this is probably a bit too windy, so you can't hear me. Um, so we got to one of the stations to go to the Grand Shrine, and we're just waiting half an hour for the bus. So I, I think we're only gonna make it to ne ne Neku, the inner shrine. Naiku or Neku? <laughs> Naiku, the inner shrine, because the outer shrine is like six kilometers. I guess. Guess who doesn't walk six kilometers? <laughs> I don't. I don't. So, yeah. So we're just waiting on the bus, and then I'll tell you more about the shrine when I Google. So after leaving Izuzagawa Station, we took a less than 15-minute bus ride. Really easy. I think it was about 210 yen to Naiku, which is the most venerable sanctuary in Japan. It's a really big deal. Okay, so we made it to Naiku, which is the inner shrine of Mia Grand Jinja. So let's look around. Oh, it's very beautiful here. Look at the mountains. So it was about a six minute bus ride. The bus took um, a long time to get here, but it was easy enough to get. And so now let's enter and explore. Come along with me. So this is the entrance to Naiku. Uh, big ass tori, um, really beautiful tori and from there you go across Yujibashi Bridge. Now Yujibashi Bridge spans across the Izuzugawa River at the entrance of Naiku and is said to separate a sacred realm from the daily world. I got all this information from the map that you should probably get at the information booth before you enter in English. Now because this is a Shinto shrine, of course you're supposed to purify yourself before entering. You can do this at the usual fountains where you use the cups to wash your hands or you can do it here at the riverside, which I didn't do because I'm, I don't know where that water is from. But this area is a great place to take pictures, so picture opportunity right here, gorgeous place. This is Kagura Den where you can pray for public happiness and this is also the area where you get your shrine stamps or amulets or make wishes. Very nice and beautiful surrounding again. I mean with the trees that are obviously very ancient and then the architectural style of even these simple har buildings where they store harvested rice for rituals, this place is so amazing and unfortunately because it's such a sacred area a lot of the places I couldn't film uh, like here back here you could only you could only see part of the building that's the main sanctuary with the holy mirror so uh, yeah it's kind of difficult to film and because this is obviously a shrine most of the persons here are there to worship so I don't really like filming them and so I couldn't film a lot of the buildings but here here's a beautiful pond another picture taking opportunity with some carp or goldfish, whatever those were. All right, so we just got finished with Naiku at Ise Grand Ginger Shrine. And I don't know, I, we could go to the outer shrine, Nabu, what's the outer shrine name? Geku. Geku, but it's a long ass walk and my knee hurts because I'm old. You want to take the bus then? Oh, we can take the bus. <laughs> Let's take the bus. The bus is 4.30. Four hundred and thirty yen. <laughs> sure is. Um. All right. All right. Let's go take the bus. So we're gonna take the bus. Hi. So we made it to Gaku after taking a ten-minute. Hi. So we made it to Gaku after taking a ten-minute walk. That's the main entrance story behind us. Um. So at. What other one name? At Nike, 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 oh God. At Nike, at Nike, at Nike, um, I didn't know you weren't supposed to eat inside the shrine area, and so I was just there eating a banana and walking around. I'm very embarrassed, but I'm not gonna make the same mistake here. Um, over there is where you purify your hands. Okay, you done full your belly already, so you don't need to eat again. Yeah, not hungry again. <laughs> so anyway, so we're going in, and then I'll take pictures if I can, but. It's really beautiful here in Mie. I love Mie. So in Japan, you can go to different shrines, well anywhere in fact, and get stamps. So these are various shrine stamps that Tia has visited. So here we are at Geku, and that's a long line to go and get your stamp. 
So we got one at Kabu, <laughs> Naiku, and now we're at Geku to get this one here. Geku has a lot of superior affiliated ginger that are dedicated to various kamis, like there was one kami for wind, and then there's also one that is there to protect or uh, what's it called? Guard, a guardian of the area of Geku, which is really cool. So you pray to all these things. But yeah, that was it for Ise Grand Shrine. I really couldn't show that much else because there were lots of people. It was very crowded and I wanted to respect their privacy. But it's a beautiful area. Great trip to take on greenery day of all days. From Ise -si Station, we hopped a train from Geku to go see Meoto Iwa. Hello! New location. So now we're closer to the sea and we're going to go to Meoto Iwa which is the rock formation that looks really cool at high tide. Um, we took the JR train from Iseshi Shrine. So we're finished with Grand Shrine. We're finished with Ise Grand Shrine area. And now we're just gonna go to the rock formation and then to Mikimoto Pearl Museum. I'm hungry, I'm really, really hungry. I'm really, 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 really hungry. So look, behind me is Meitoa Iwa. Isn't it nice? We walked like 15 minutes just to see this, but it's really nice. And I'm gonna try and get some closer shots, but I like it. So this is the area around. So it's a shrine, so of course people are, Tia's getting her stamp. People are taking pictures and praying, so I like it here. So great. So these are the two sacred rocks near Ise City, near town Futami, near Ise City. Uh, one represents the husband and one represents the wife. The rocks are connected by Shimenawa rope, which acts as a division between the spiritual and earthly realms. And they actually replace this rope, obviously, because it kind of breaks every, like three times a year in a, in a very religious ceremony. And it's best that you go and see this at high tide when the water separates the two. From Meoto Iwa, we took a bus near the aquarium there to Tobo. Uh, Tobo is where you have the Mikimoto Pearl Island and the Mikimoto Pearl Museum. So it's a great place to go and learn about pearl cultivation in Japan. And Mikimoto Company is actually one of the most famous pearl cultivators in the world. Like really amazing pearls. The cost of admission was 1,500 yen for adults and 750 yen for children. And it's a really great place place to learn about pearl cultivation which is actually very interesting to me and also they have uh, exhibitions of ama divers ama female divers which is really cool as you'll see so we just made it to mikimoto pearl island so um mikimoto was the first person mr mikimoto i can't pronounce his first name was the first person to cultivate pearls so he did this way back in the 30s so he's from japan japanese did it first Go Japan! So we're just gonna walk around and explore the museum and learn about pearls. Yay! Japanese are very proud of the fact that last year they hosted the G7 summit in Ise and these were pictures of the dignitaries, well their wives, visiting Mikimoto Pearl Museum. Like even Queen Elizabeth, who I love, she visited Mikimoto Pearl Island back in the 60s on her trip to Japan. And it's really interesting because it's it's amazing what Mikimoto did, making this into a profitable business of pearl cultivation. And it was interesting to learn how they do it exactly because I, I thought pearls came from clams at some point. So there I went and I learned, no, pearls come from oysters. And they develop when like there's this foreign object that enters their mantle and it's like a self-defense technique to secrete this thing and the thing turns into pearls it's really creative it's amazing and people spend millions of dollars on pearls so yeah and this is how they hang the oysters in the water and then divers go and collect it so much information you can learn from this place and I now want to be a pearl cultivator back home in Jamaica that that's the goal I'm gonna go to Jamaica and use the knowledge I learned from this museum and start cultivating pearls because I mean it looks easy it totally looks so easy I, I could do this I could definitely do this yeah no who am I kidding but also there's the Mikimoto store there I didn't get to film anything 
inside the store because I didn't want to get in trouble. But here at the museum, they explained the different types of pearls and different types of necklaces. And you can buy items in the store, in the Mickey Mouse store, which is next door. And you can learn about the various types of jewelry they make from pearls in the Mickey Moto Museum, which is interesting for me. Before coming here, I wasn't really a big fan of pearls, uh, but after this visit, I'm like, wow, they can really do some fantastic things with pearl, and especially the ancient pearl jewelry they had on display, because they had modern pearls, how to make modern, modern pearls, cultivated pearls, and how people used to make pearl jewelry back when it was just oysters that naturally made them so they were rare but throughout the centuries man pearls have just always been one of those statement pieces in fashion necklaces bracelets tiaras i love tiaras because i'm obsessed with royal families and so when i see a tiara i'm just like yes Yas, jewelry. So yeah, after the museum, we went to watch the Ama Divers demonstration. Ama Divers are traditional Japanese divers, usually women, and they played an important role in the cultivation of pearls. Uh, they used their technique where they can hold their breath for a really long time and they collected the pearls and also replaced the pearls when the nucleus to make the pearl was inserted. Back in the day they did this completely naked, just a loincloth, but now they wear clothes. So please enjoy this display from the am amazing Amadivers. Divers. We just finished with Mikimoto Pearl Island, which was very awesome as you can see. I hope you enjoyed seeing the Ama Women show where they picked the, um, the pearls. So now we're heading back to Naro because it's closer than Wakayama. And that's it. That's it for the Mie trip. I had a wonderful time. Thank you, Tia. <laughs> so until next time.